Hello, welcome to this video introducing arc length. We're going to go through some easier examples. In the next video, we'll do a harder example. We're going to introduce the formula and um, hopefully you can uh, recognize it from something you might have seen before. We're traveling along a curve in space. We're in three space and there's a curve and that curve is described by a parameter t. You have some starting point t equals a, some ending point t equals b, and as you go along that curve, how far did you travel? That's the question we want to answer. You've seen it before. This isn't your first time hopefully seeing arc length. Back in the previous class, you um, calculated arc length. We were given y is a function of x in 2D. You calculated arc length by taking a derivative and squaring it and adding one and taking a square root. And this is before you learn complicated integration techniques. And so it needed to be a, almost a perfect square for you to end up being able to integrate it. But um, yeah, there's the formula. Derivative squared plus one, take a square root, integrate from A to B. So that was a previous class. Um, functions might, might have also been explained in a parametric way, where instead of having Y as a function of X, we have the X and Y both being function of a parameter T. In order to find arc length with that, we take the derivative in square for each of these functions, add them up and take a square root. So for 3D, it's going to mimic that. We're going to have one more component, the K component. This is going to be a different function. Call it H of T. And so that formula there is going to help us get our arc length formula in 3D. The derivative square of F and G and, and H all added up and take a square root. Integrate from A to B. The interior of that integral should look familiar. Whenever you take components and square them and add them and take a square root, what you're finding is the magnitude of that vector. But this isn't the original position vector. Those aren't the, just the functions that are squared. Those are the derivatives that are squared. And so the derivative vector is the velocity vector. And what you're finding in that integrand is the magnitude of the velocity vector. And so it's better to write arc length using that formula. Whenever you take the arc length, um, whenever you take the magnitude of velocity, what you're finding is speed. The speed that the that the um, that you're traveling as you go along the curve. Let's start off with a really simple example. We have um, the helix. X is three cosine t, and y is three sine t, and z is four t. We're going to travel on this helix from t equals zero to t equals eight. We have the formula from the previous slide. That formula involves taking a derivative. Jump right in. Take the derivative. I component's derivative is negative 3 sine t. J component's derivative is 3 cosine t. K component's derivative is 4. Now, you have to remember, though, what you're integrating is not the velocity vector. You're integrating the magnitude of the velocity vector. So square each component. 9 sine squared, 9 cosine squared, 16, and we add them up. Be on the lookout for sine squared plus cosine squared because that's going to be 1. So if you can factor the 9 out of the first term, that, that parentheses there, sine squared plus cosine squared, that, that's a 1. It's really 9 plus 16 underneath the square root. So we're talking about 5. The speed that you travel along this curve, no matter what time t you have, is 5. That's what you integrate from 0 to 8. Probably the easiest integral you'll have all semester. And so you end up with 40. Here's the animation for, uh, for this particular function. Start at t equals 0. You end at t equals 8. Um, the last component is 4t, so you, you're, you're right at 32 when you're done. And the distance traveled is equal to 40. All right, great. Let's see another example. Each one of these components is cubed with a different coefficient on front of, uh, out in front. And we're interested in the time going from 1 to 2. We have the formula. We need the velocities, vectors, magnitude. We'll just get 18t squared minus 6t squared and minus 9t squared. And we'll square each of these components and we'll take a square root after adding them up. Uh, 18 squared is 324. And then 36 
and then 81. We add all those up, and something very convenient happens. Surprising. That when you add 324 and 36 and 81, you get 441. And that's a perfect square. That is, well, 20 squared is 400. 21 squared is 441. And so um, we have a perfect square underneath the square root. So you give me a time t, and I'll be able to calculate the speed by squaring that time and multiplying it by 21. This formula, 21t squared, then, is what you integrate to find arc length. From 1 to 2, the antiderivative of 21t squared is conveniently just 7t cubed. We'll put a 2 in, we'll put a 1 in, 8 minus 1. The answer to this question is 49. Here's a visual for that one. Is it going to play for me? Oh, there we go. This is a straight line path. Okay. All right, great. Uh, let's do one more. We have 2t, root 3t squared, and t cubed. Same time interval, 1 to 2. All right, so we start with the derivative. I component's derivative is 2. J component's derivative is 2 root 3t. K component's derivative is 3t squared. Square each component. So 4. If you square 2 root 3, you'll get 12. Don't forget to square the t, though, and get t squared. And then squaring 3t squared, you get 9t fourths. It is the sum of these that we take a square root of, and that'll give us the formula for speed based on time t. Now, if we go with this and try to integrate it in its current form, we're going to run into trouble. We're not going to have a, the ability to be able to find the antiderivative of that. And so we have to recognize that this can be simplified further. Rearrange the terms to be in the normal kind of a decreasing order. And I know it's a fourth degree, but you kind of treat it like it's a quadratic. 9w squared plus 12w plus 2 can be factored nicely. And I'm just thinking of w as like equal to t squared, if you need that. But um, yeah, it's a perfect square, which is convenient because it's underneath a square root. It's 3t squared plus 2 quantity squared. Okay. So they wipe each other out. Your speed is governed by the formula 3t squared plus 2. That's what you integrate. In this case, we're going from 1 to 2. Antiderivative of 3t squared, just t cubed. Antiderivative of 2, 2t. Put a 2 in, put a 1 in. You'll get 8 plus 4, then you'll get 1 plus 2, subtract, 12 minus 3, the answer is 9. Here's the visual on this one. A little more bend to it, kind of fits a parabola in y. The, uh, the green is the y-axis, the red is the blue axis, and the z is the um, blue axis. All right. All right, great. So that's three examples. Uh, the fourth example is uh, much more complicated. Let's have that one in its own video. But um, just an intro to arc length. Hopefully you um, are able to um, be able to integrate once you've once you found the velocity and found its magnitude. You need something that you could actually find the antiderivative of. All right. All right. Thanks for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. I'm helping you through this journey of multivariable calculus. You can um, reach out to me if you have any questions. Please like and subscribe. Comment down below. I'll see you in the next video.